This one year, a whole, I don't know what the term is, a gaggle, a whole yeah. gaggle of nuns. <laughs> A, yes. whole, a whole group of nuns got the sofa. Joy FM is celebrating 20 years of ministry being on the air, and so we thought we'd just come to Nashville and talk to 20 of our favorite friends. Today, we have Matt Marr. Hi, Matt, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. We're so excited to spend some time with you, and you have been a part of ministry in St. Louis for a lot of years. Do you have a specific thing that stands out to you over the well, years? Well, I mean, it's freezing here today. So I said, <laughs> I, I was thinking about being there in 1999 when Pope John Paul II was there and trying to play my guitar outside and it was so cold. It, it just was, uh, guitars don't like cold weather. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I've just had so many amazing memories, I think, of being there. Probably one of my favorite was the Sofa Series mm -hmm. with, and this one year, a whole, I don't know what the term is, a gaggle, a whole yeah. gaggle of nuns. <laughs> A, yes. whole, a whole group of nuns got the sofa, so they were just, you know, sitting up front. So uh, that was a pretty special night for sure. I remember that, and I remember seeing your face when you walked out. You're like, whoa, yeah, yeah, this yeah, has yeah, never yeah, happened yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty awesome. It was really a cool night. So um, 20 years ago, who was Matt Marr? What did your faith look like? Well, 20 years ago, I was five years into walking with Jesus mm. as the year 2000 I hadn't I'd written a couple of songs mm -hmm. uh, I was just graduated from college uh, trying to figure out what to do with my life and uh, I remember being really confused about God's will and someone said you know Matt God's will for your life is to be holy to be set apart for him mm. so just do whatever it takes to make him the highest priority in your life. Mm. And it helped my discernment a lot. I bet. I think. Um, I never really forgot. It's like one of those conversations you don't forget about. So, you know, I was um, kind of very much, I mean, I was born and raised going to church. Uh, I always tell people I always believed in God. Mm -hmm. I never really knew that he believed in me. Mm. So I think 20 years ago, I was kind of trying to get my bearings with all that and um, making lots of mistakes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just journeying with Jesus, the same as I am now. Yeah. So five years in, um, music obviously has been an influence oh, in yeah. your life. It's... In your five years in your faith, what were you listening to? at that point yeah you know great question especially as a young believer yeah you know well i was still listening to a lot of mainstream music mm -hmm. but uh i was listening to jars of clay yeah dc talk um and then i just had gotten into this band from england called delirious oh yes and their music that year in mm -hmm. particular had a pretty profound impact. It really was kind of like a course, like a course correction mm. thing for me. Um, there was a Monday night Bible study at the church that I worked at that I used to play music at. And I would drive around in my car all week and listen to these songs. And then I would wheel a old projector with like transparencies yeah. <laughs> across the church parking lot and yeah, play guitar on Monday nights. And I was just kind of getting into like, I guess being a worship leader, yeah. um, you know, kind of leading corporate singing and praying and just kind of ha having the time of my life. Mm -hmm. It was a real, you know, I think it was a very um, earnest, heartfelt time. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but uh, it was very honest. It Did it feel pure. like a natural transition for you to start leading in a corporate setting? Or was it something that took you a little bit to kind of step into? Yeah, I think it always does. And I, I think because so much of, I think, trying to be a leader is contextually driven. Mm. You can't just walk into the same uh, scenario of people because personalities change and temperaments change right. and things change. And so I think... Um, Obviously, in my 20s, I probably struggled with pride a lot and mm -hmm. thought I knew a lot about myself. I feel like so much of the Christian journey is about like God peeling back layers of knowing. 
-hmm. getting back to the mystery that he is and you know it's like if I know anything more about myself now it's I know my own inconsistency mm. I know my own humanity oh. so I think that guy leading worship then back then would be a guy who would probably uh, just be hear a song and be really excited to, to sing it. I will say this, that the thing I remember the most was being passionate about hearing everyone sing. Hmm. Wasn't really passionate about being heard as much as I was passionate about wanting to hear the church sing. Yeah. Because I never really thought I had a good voice. Hmm. So That's uh, amazing. <laughs> So with that in mind, you know, um, many people may not know that you've, you've written some of the songs that they've been singing for years around the, you know, around the world in the church. And for instance, um, you know, your grace is enough, yeah. you know, and when you write a song that truly is as special as that, do you, did you know that when you were writing it or did you feel, did you think like, oh man, there's something here or were you just, you know, like, oh, this is a neat song. Well, I, I, I just think that has to do with like a certain level of maturity, both as a person, but all, I mean, but spiritual maturity. So mm -hmm. you kind of, it's like digging, I don't know, in some ways there's this, there's this thing about songwriting that there's an element to it that we don't fully understand, but songwriters do have this sort of antenna in them. It's almost like that guy holding up a, a stick looking for water. Yeah. And you do kind of get, there is this thing where there's an interior antenna, like a spider sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think it's a combination of how certain people are gifted. And, it, and yeah, it's obviously the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, because that's where inspiration, you know, I mean, he, Holy Spirit's the muse, you know. Yeah. So I think, uh, so I think for me, it when I wrote that, song it felt different mm. but it was also the first it's kind of first or second song like that that i'd written it was like wow. a modern worship song i'd written a lot of bad songs about relationships <laughs> i was singing in coffee houses and then i was writing some stuff that was almost more liturgical or hymn like mm -hmm. and then out this thing sort of this song kind of came out out of a very human place and but it kind of that one felt like this is new ground mm. and this feels familiar. And at the same time, this feels like a place I haven't been before. Wow. So, but since then, yeah, I think when you're writing a song and you hit a lyric or a chorus yeah. and something in you kind of fires up and I've learned to trust less of it from an intellectual standpoint and more from that just sort of core, uh, more basic standpoint like does it like does it move me mm. yeah because god moves me yeah so wow so your grace is enough yeah christ is risen um because he lives your love defends me i mean there's so many songs would you mind yeah i mean st louis loves <laughs> matt mar <laughs> we love matt mar and uh, would you mind playing some of those sure that would we would love that Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. So grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Um, um. Surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me. Your love defends me. And when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me. Your love defends me. Amazing. There it is. There's Thank a snippet. You. Yeah, you're I welcome. Love it. So run to the Father, you know, during you were doing a sound check and yes. we're singing that. And um, that is such a powerful song. Oh. Is that been was that a personal you know, came out of a personal place for you or through scriptures or so that was a song that I co wrote with another artist named Cody Carnes, mm -hmm. who's uh, Carrie Job's husband. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was just name dropping. I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> um, you know, living in Nashville, one of the reasons I relocated here was to I love collaborating and getting mm -hmm. to write. And so Cody was work, starting to work on music for his project, next, upcoming project. And this was the, in January of uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And so we got together uh, with another writer and he kind of had a clear sense of what he wanted to write about. He's like, he literally said, I think he said, he goes, I want to write a song about the revelation of God's heart as a father. Mm -hmm. And I'm a dad, he's a dad. So I, you know, it's one of those things where we kind of wrote the song and it's almost something that's like so close, you don't, it's like you don't fully get it. Yeah. So, you know, I would say that that song, especially in light of last year and everything that, I mean, all of us have been through, in particular as a dad, I've been locked home with my kids which is great and crazy because there are three <laughs> kids under nine. And I think for me, fatherhood has exposed, it's, it's a way in which God has exposed um, all, not, not, not even just so much all the, all the ways in which I'm lacking, mm. um, but all the places in which he wants to provide. So it's 2020 was a very hard year for everyone. I think for me as a dad, it, it's probably I'll look back on it and realize like it was a year where I, as a dad, realized I was like, I can't, I don't want to act this way. Yeah. You know, um, my dad passed away several years ago. And I think in, in the process of God reconciling things with that, you know, you make as a kid, you get modeled. The closest thing to God is your parents, mm. so especially your dad. Yeah. So you can have a very human concept of God and not even realize it, because that's what, that's who your dad was. Yeah. So all of a sudden you start thinking, oh well, God isn't patient. God gets angry really easily. Mm. He gets really disappointed, or he's distant, or he's all these things, and it's like he's not those things. Yeah. That's not who he is. So I think for me, this song getting to be part of the song and then recording it. Um, because originally the plan was for Cody to record it, but kind of as time progressed, I just thought, man, I actually, this song really does mean something to me too, mm -hmm. so. Would you mind doing no, that? No, I don't mind bit? at all. That'd be great. Yeah. I've carried a burden too long on my own I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go I see you now I'm laying it down I know that I need you. I run to the Father, full into grace. I'm done with the hiding, reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again. 